Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks, and techniques that you require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you learn how to deploy reusable components to an ADF library. My name is Didi Morton, and I am part of the Oracle Development Tools Curriculum Development Team. Before we get into the details of how to deploy reusable components to an ADF library, Let's discuss some general considerations to keep in mind when you design your application. From the beginning, design your application with component reusability in mind. Consider which components are candidates for reuse. To determine if a component is a good candidate for reuse, consider how often it will be used in your application and whether you want the look, feel, or behavior of the component to be consistent across the application. Decide how to group the components into libraries that meet your organizational needs, and decide where the libraries will be stored. As a general rule, you should create separate libraries for UI components and business components. Also consider creating standardized naming conventions to make it easier for creators and consumers to work with your libraries. So what exactly is an ADF library? An ADF library is a jar file that contains reusable components and any dependent libraries required by the project. An ADF library can include any of the following types of components. Application modules, business components, such as entity objects, view objects, and associations, data controls, task flows, page templates, and declarative components. For example, to ensure a consistent look and feel across the pages of your application, you probably want to create an ADF library that contains page templates and other UI components. When you package the components into a library, all the UI developers who are working on the project can use components from the same library. In this demonstration, we learn how to create two ADF libraries, a library that contains UI components and a library that contains business components. The UI components library contains a page template that will be used by each department in a company to create an internal web page for the department. The template defines the look and feel of the page. It includes areas known as facets where page designers can add content. The business components library includes read-only view objects for querying the department's and employees table, plus a view object that is based on a static list of values. The values in the static list will be used to populate a drop-down list of languages. So let's learn how to package reusable components into an ADF library. First, you create a deployment profile for the project. The deployment profile specifies the archive type, the name of the jar file, and the directory path where the jar will be created. After creating the deployment profile, you use the deployment wizard to deploy the project to an ADF library. Note that a project corresponds to a single ADF library jar. If you create multiple projects and want to reuse components from each of the projects, you need to create an ADF library jar for each project. Now let's see a demonstration that shows how to deploy a project to an ADF library. First, let's take a quick look at the components that we're deploying to an ADF library. Under the View Controller project, Reusable UI Components, we have a page template called mydepartmenttemplate.jsf. The template contains a header with a company logo, a footer, and page layout that we don't want template users to modify. The template also contains several facets where template users can add content. Under the model project, reusable business components, we have read-only view objects for accessing data in the departments, and employees tables, and a read-only view object that contains a static list of values, in this case, a list of languages. To create an ADF library, we first create a deployment profile. In the Application Navigator, double-click the Reusable UI Components project to open the project properties. Select Deployment. Click New. Make sure ADF Library Jar File is selected. Specify a name for the deployment profile. Let's call it UI Components. Click OK. Next, select Jar Options. Under Jar File, specify the path to the jar file that will contain the library. 
I'll create a jar called UIComponents.jar in the folder called Deploy under Reusable Components. Click OK and then click OK again. Save your project. Now you can use the deployment profile that you created to deploy the UI components to an ADF library. In the Application Navigator, right-click the Reusable UI Components project and select Deploy, and then select the name of the profile you created, in this case, UI Components. In the Deployment Wizard, click Next. View the Deployment Summary, and then click Finish. The JAR file is created in the path that you specified. OK, so let's repeat these steps to deploy the business components to an ADF library. Double-click the Reusable Business Components project to open the project properties. Select Deployment. Click New. Make sure ADF Library JAR file is selected. Specify a name for the deployment profile. Let's call it Business Components. Click OK. Next, select JAR Options. Under JAR File, specify the path to the JAR file that will contain the library. We'll create a JAR called businesscomponents.jar in the folder called Deploy under Reusable Components. Click OK, and then click OK again. Save your project. Now you can use the deployment profile that you created to deploy the business components to an ADF library. Right-click the Reusable Business Components project and select Deploy, and then the name of the profile you created, in this case, Business Components. Click Next. View the deployment summary, and then click Finish. The JAR file is created in the path that you specified. Now you know how to create an ADF library. Next, let's learn how to use resources from the library. The easiest way to use an ADF library is by adding the library resources to a project. To do this, in the Resource Palette, you connect to the repository where the ADF library is stored, in this example a file system. Then you simply add the library to the current project, and all components in the library become available for use in the project. If a component in the library changes, you simply redeploy the library. Now let's see a demonstration that shows how to add an ADF library to the resource palette and use the library resources in a project. OK, so let's assume I'm a developer who wants to consume these libraries in a separate project. Notice that I've opened an application that will use resources from the libraries. Make sure the resource palette is open. If it's not, select View Resource Palette to open it. In the Resource Palette, click the New button and select New Connection File System. Enter a name for the connection. Let's enter Reusable Components. Browse to the folder that contains the ADF library jars. Notice that you specify the path to the folder, not the jar file. Test the connection. Good, it says Success. While still in the resource palette, expand File System Reusable Components. Next, let's add the library resources to our View Controller project. Select the View Controller project. In the resource palette, right click the UI Components jar and click Add to Project. Click Add Library. Repeat these steps for the Business Components jar. The jars are now added to the class path. The resources that we deployed as ADF libraries are available for use in our project. Save the project. Notice the warning about the incomplete database connection. We need to configure the connection before using it. Let's do that now. Expand Application Resources. Right-click the connection and select Properties. Let's specify the password for the HR user. Test the connection. It looks good. Now, let's build a page that uses the template from the library. In the Application Navigator, right-click the View Controller project 
and select New. Select JSF Facelets and then select Page. Click OK. Specify a name for the page, let's say Finance Home. We'll accept the default document type Facelets. Under Page Layout, in the drop-down list, notice that the template we packaged in the library appears in the list. Select the template and click OK. Now we have a page that's based on the template from our ADF library. Notice that the page contains grayed out areas that you cannot modify, plus facets where you can add content. Let's quickly add some content. If the component palette is not open, select View, Component Palette to open it. First, let's add a header for the department name. Let's drag an output text control to the department name facet. We're creating a page for the finance department, so we'll enter that here for the value. Of course, you would probably want to use a resource bundle for the text, or you could get the department name from the database, but we'll just type the heading in this demonstration and use an existing style to give it some formatting. In the Property Inspector under Style, click the down arrow next to the Style class and click Edit. Under Available Classes, scroll down to select AF Header Level 1 and shuttle it into the Selected Classes area. Next, let's use the static list of languages in the Read Only View object, Static Values, to create a drop-down list. Expand the data controls for the Application module. Select the Data Control Static Values and drag it to the facet called Language Selection. Select Single Selection, ADF Select One Choice, Notice that the data collection and display attribute are selected for you. Click OK. Next, let's use the data control for the Employees View object to add content to one of the facets. Expand Departments 1 and select Employees 2. Drag the Employees 2 control to the R Team facet in the Structure view. Notice that you can drag data controls to a facet in the Structure view even if the facet appears on a tab that is grayed out in the editor. Select Table, ADF Read-Only Table. Let's remove the rows that we don't want to display on the page. Enable Sorting and click OK. When the table on this page renders, it will contain only the employees for the Finance Department because we've set up a query in the view object to return only the employees for the specified department. The page isn't complete, but let's run it anyhow to see how it looks. Right-click the page and select Run. The page renders using the layout that is specified in the template. You can see that the Employees table displays the employees in the Finance Department. In the upper right-hand corner of the page, you can click the drop-down list to select from a list of supported languages. The drop-down list in our example doesn't do anything. In a real application, selecting an option in the list would trigger logic that renders the page in the selected language. Okay, so what if the company decides after we've published our page that they want to change the template and add another language to the static values view object? How does our page pick up the changes? Well, when we added the ADF libraries to our project, we didn't actually copy the components to our project. Instead, we added a reference to the ADF libraries. When the ADF libraries are redeployed, the changes are automatically applied to our project. So let's change the template in our library project to use another logo. Select the image in the Design view. In the Properties Inspector, next to the Source field, Click the down arrow and select Edit. Browse to find and select a different logo. Save the changes. Also, let's add language to the view object static values. Expand the Reusable Business Components project 
and then expand the model UI view package. Double click the view object, Static Values. Select the Static Values finger tab. Click the green plus icon to add another value. Let's add Portuguese. Next, we redeploy the ADF libraries. In the Application Navigator, right-click the Model Project and select Deploy, and then the name of the deployment profile, Business Components. Repeat this step for UI Components. Now that we've redeployed the ADF libraries, let's run the JSF page that we created earlier. Right-click the page and select Run. The page loads. Notice that the page picks up the changes we made to the template. Also, the drop-down list of languages now includes Portuguese. In this demonstration, you learned how to deploy reusable components to an ADF library and use the components in a project. Remember that creating, deploying, and using reusable components improves project efficiency and ensures consistency across your application. For more information, including downloads, tutorials, discussions, and more, you can go to the Oracle Technology Network. Thank you for listening.